Hey YouTube, what's up? It's Jeff. Uh, long time no update. Um, two years actually, because uh, I know this because it's been two years since my last haircut and I had some pretty short hair uh, when I did my last update. I don't really have a uh, whole lot that I want to say in this video. I'm going to keep it brief, but um, I wanted to share some thoughts on growing out my hair um, as a guy with trans experience. Um, because I've definitely had a lot of thoughts about it over the last two years and what triggered this is tomorrow I'm actually going to the barber to chop it all off. So I thought, well, I'm really thinking about it, uh, let me just document it and pop in and say hey real fast. So, um, so yeah, as I said, it's been two years since my last haircut. Um, I can tell you I never wear my hair down. Uh, I just put it down now so uh, you can all appreciate just how long it's gotten. Um, but typically I, I wear it back in a bun. <clears throat> um, this is going to be the fourth time that I've donated my hair in my entire life. Uh, but it's the first time that I've done it since I transitioned. Um, I started growing out my hair because my girlfriend has always liked my hair. Um, long, short, doesn't matter, but especially long. So uh, she suggested that I grow it out again and I figured I'd give it a shot um, because I had been rocking buzz cuts or undercuts or whatever um, for like six years uh, since even before I came out I had shorter hair. So I said, yeah, you know, why not? Let's give it a shot. Um, and pretty surprisingly or unexpectedly to me, um, I quickly started experiencing some pretty severe dysphoria about it. Um, it was definitely the first time in years that I felt that dysphoric about my appearance. Um, and what I started to realize is it's because hair was something that I never had control over when I was younger. And it was the one thing about my appearance that I always wanted to make more masculine and just wasn't allowed to. Um, when I was little, I dressed pretty androgynously or tomboy, definitely more on the masculine butch side of um, how I used to dress and present. Um, but, you know, when I was a kid, as early as like five years old, I remember telling my mom, you know, I want to have a buzz cut like my friend Zach in kindergarten, uh, who was my best friend at the time. And, uh, and being told, oh yeah, like we can, we can cut your hair, but it can't go shorter than here. Um, and I think that for, well, I think the, the main reason for that is because, you know, my family wanted to control my appearance because by not letting me cut my hair too short, no matter how butch or tomboy or whatever I wanted to dress, I could, I would always be gendered as female if I had longer hair. Um, there was no doubt about that. <laughs> And I think that, you know, my, my parents, they're, they're great now. It's apples and oranges. But when I was little, gender variance, gender, gender deviance, they weren't even 100% cool with me being a tomboy in how I dressed. So, um, you know, being forced into the occasional dresses was one thing, but my hair had to stay long, um, which sucked. And it made me feel like I didn't have agency over... Uh, my appearance, and I, like I said, I can remember this as young as like five years old. But yeah, and then when I was in high school, uh, I kept my hair long. Um, in part because, you know, I was still living at home with my parents, but um, there was a time in my life where I really wanted to try giving, you know, being femme the old college try. I really wanted to, um, I don't know. I, at that point, I didn't have the words for what it meant to be trans. Um, so I kept my hair really long. Um, and I got a lot of compliments about it. Um, and it became, I think, one of the defining examples of that time in my life of me making decisions about my appearance to make other people happy or to fit other people's expectations of how I should present and how I should look, um, even though it left me feeling miserable. Um, you know the hair, um, wearing occasional dresses, wearing skirts as part of my uniform in high school. Um, these were all things that I did um, trying to please people around me um, or fit those conventional um, expectations. Um, but I think for whatever reason, the hair was like the one thing. Because uh, I, never, I never really got into makeup, but like I would take care of my hair. So it became like the symbol of that 
girly period in my life, or it's not even girly. It was this period of like trying to put on a work uniform <laughs> of being a girl. Um, and that's what I saw my hair as. But yeah, but so now fast forward to now, right? I'm growing my hair out. I've got a full beard. I have passing privilege. And um, I felt all of those feelings coming back like pretty rapidly. Um, like I was trapped. Like if I wore my hair down, I'd be red as a girl. I'd be harassed. Um, you know, I, I had a couple of experiences recently where people saw me from like the back or the side and I had my hair pulled up in a bun and they accidentally, you know, said miss or something like that. Um, you know, such an innocent mistake. It, and yet it was, <laughs> it just made me sort of internally spiral and internally die a little bit. Um, cause that's what dysphoria does, right? I mean, it's not rational. I know that the minute I turned around and they saw my face and they corrected themselves immediately, they weren't even embarrassed because they said, oh no, clearly you're a guy. Um, but for me, like I held on to that for a really long time. So yeah, so the question you might be asking yourself is, Jeff, why didn't you just cut your hair off? Um, <laughs> And I decided that maybe like, I don't know, a year ago, I was ready to do it. Um, I had had it, I felt terrible about, <laughs> about this stupid hair. Hair shouldn't cause you that much stress. But I, I said, you know what, I've already made it a year and I really want to turn all of this stress and this uh, stupidity that I'm laughing about um, with dysphoria uh, into something positive. So, you know, there's a minimum length that it has to be before you can chop it off and donate it. And I said, I'm going to hold on, um, come hell or high water until I hit that length. And that way I could look at it as my way of reclaiming, but like reclaiming ownership over my appearance and channeling something that really stressed me out into something really positive. So tomorrow I'm chopping it all off. Uh, and I'm donating it to a small nonprofit called Hair We Share. Um, they came highly recommended to me and they'll turn my hair into a wig for either a woman or a child who's currently living with cancer. Um, so yeah, I'm pretty pumped about that. Um, I'm excited to have short hair again. I'm happy that I went through the experience because it reminded me of all, everything that I went through before I had consistent passing privilege. Um, and I feel really helped me connect with the other trans people that I know in my life or, or know of in my life. Um, you know, friends and acquaintances who don't have passing privilege or don't want it, um, but still deal with dysphoria and, the, and these similar feelings. And again, like, <laughs> I, there's still a part of me that feels like it's just hair. What's the big deal? But, um, that's what dysphoria does. But, uh, so would I grow it out again? Um... I don't know. I, I don't like to say never, you know, never say never, but uh, definitely not for a while. I'm looking forward to having short hair again and just feeling more comfortable um, in general. Anyway, so that's the story. That's my ridiculously long hair right now. Um, otherwise, life updates, things have been busy and crazy as usual. Um, I've fallen off the YouTube bandwagon, but I still do follow a lot of trans folks and trans voices on here, um, which has been good, especially given the ridiculous political climate that we find ourselves in today. Um, a lot's changed in the last two years. Uh, so yeah, for anyone that um, is watching this right now, hope you're doing well, hope you're hanging in there, uh, and I'm sending all my love and support your way as always. Um, all right. Thanks, guys. Thanks for listening to some rambling about... <laughs>